Hello, welcome to Repairer of the Breach, where God is repairing one soul at a time. I'm your host, Kimberly McAllister, and today I have on the set with me DJ Jesse Smith from Upper Room. Please welcome him to the show because today we're going to talk about music. God bless you. Thank you for having me. Bless you. Um, I want to um, ask you first to take us back to when you first fell in love with music. Okay. Uh, wow. From <laughs> birth. Um, I started actually recording, not recording, but collecting recordings, uh, 45 singles, if any of you remember those, um, <laughs> when I was a kid, like three years old. Wow. And, and just, you know, I just was drawn to it. And right. my mother gave me a little record player and, and I just started collecting, you know, Stevie Wonder and wow. Marvin Gaye records and I would play them. That was my comfort. So wow. that's never left me. So. And did you come from a musical background? Um, my father, he played the saxophone. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother just always had music around the house. So wow. it was just something that was normal to us, so. Right. How many um, siblings do you have? Uh, 10. 10, wow. I'm the youngest wow. one. And you're the youngest one. Yes. Wow, so you really felt like a pull in your heart towards music. Yes. And as you got older, um, were there any type of um, classes that you took up or any type of activities that you did to, to enhance the gift that, you know, at that time? Well, uh, before my teenage years, I self-taught myself how to play the drums. So wow. when my father was playing, you know, his saxophone, he had a drum set also, but I never mm -hmm. saw him actually play it. Right. So he would play the saxophone and I would get on the drums and, and that's how I taught myself how to play. Oh wow. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Did you feel at that time that maybe God had a call on your life? Because that's ministry. Music, yes. music is ministry. And I don't think a lot of people understand that, that music is, in, is, is it's a ministry within itself. Right. So have you, um, you know, did it, when did it, or if it ever came to you that music, you know, was a part of your ministry? Well, I, it's always been a part of me, so mm -hmm. that's just something that God instilled in me. I was always drawn to it, but um, as far as, you know, me elevating as far as with music, I started writing poetry at an early age. Oh, wow. When I was 12 years old, I got my first poet, you know, my poetry uh -huh. published in um, Reader's Digest. Oh, that's beautiful. You know, and, and that was like at the age of 12, so mm. that was was something that said, all right, so now I can write. So <laughs> you, didn't, and, you didn't connect the two yeah, at yeah, that time, right? Because yeah, so you're still like, young, so right? So what's the, you know, what, what is this? You know, right, but then right. I, I knew that, you know, with the music, of course, there was words and lyrics to the songs. Ah. So then later on, I started getting into writing, uh, trying to write songs. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's how I developed even more with performing and, and doing shows as far as uh, talent shows and mm -hmm. stuff and then I got into the DJing wow. and that just escalated and really stuck with me. So. Right, right. Um, I know you and I, we talked a little earlier and I was asking you, at what age did you give your life to the Lord? Twelve. Wow, wow. How did that take place? I want you to share with our viewers because some people think that when you're young, God can't call you. And I really want to encourage the young people out there that at any age, God can call you. So yes. share with us how, how that came about. Well, I was, I was raised up in the church. So um, I always had a love for God. So mm -hmm. uh, what really did it for me is being that, like I said, I collected records and right. this guest minister came in to the church and he preached about worrying and, and mm. believing in God. And mm -hmm the thing he had to promote his sermons was a record. And I was right. like, oh, he has wow. records, you know? <laughs> so, so I was really, That's you like know, candy to you yeah. at that age, right? And I was right? like, I want that record. So I, you know, I talked, you know, a family member into the purchasing it for me and, uh -huh. and I got it and I took it home. Right. And anybody that knows about vinyl, there's grooves and the yes. vinyl and there's separation of songs. And this just was like a clear, big song. It wasn't no <laughs> separations. It was just his sermon on, you know, nonstop on this, this 33 record. And I was touched by that. Wow. You know, wow. so 
And I mean, at the time, were you going through something where you were actually worried? Well, I, I knew it was a struggle in, in our house because we didn't have a lot. Right. You know, so, and, and then we had, you know, the father not in the home, so mm. it was it was definitely mm. a struggle. So, yeah. you know, I, I felt that because I was the youngest one in the totem pole there. So it's right. like, all right, so I got whatever was left or, you know, I felt that way that, mm -hmm. you know, is there enough for me? Right. Because it was so many of us, so. But the, the joy of music and, you know, that was just beautiful to me. And then with the father not in the home, mm -hmm. you know, with me listening to the sermons and, you know, my minister telling me that, look, Jesus right. is your father. Wow. So, you know, that, wow. that's, you know, that, that you know, took you. me back and, yeah. it, and it touched me. It was yeah. like, well, Jesus is my father, so mm. I need to follow him. I need to do mm -hmm. what he wants me to do. Because right. he's my parent now. Right. So, you know, if he says to give my life to him, uh -huh. that's what I should do. Wow. So at 12 wow. years old, that's what I did. Wow. Now, growing up, because I know, you know, being 12, that's a very tender age. Growing up, and, you know, sometimes there are other children who, they don't know about Jesus. So they kind of may, may look at you as being corny, mm. you know. But did you ever feel that way? Did you know? No, because all the siblings that were closer to me, we all went to church, so that oh, it wasn't. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, so it wasn't nothing that was strange about that. Right. You know, right. So. Right. Right. And when after you gave your life to the Lord, um, did God uh, begin to show you how He wanted to use you in music? Well, in music, not directly in music. I mean. I got from the sermons also that you're supposed to share mm -hmm. the word. So, mm. you know, at age and beyond, that's what I did. On the right. playgrounds and at school, that's what I did. I shared the word with my You were my sharing friends. the word of God yeah. <laughs> on the playground. Y'all need yeah. to listen to this because he was sharing the word of God on the playground. That's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. awesome. You had no fear of no. your salvation. No, because that's, you know, I guess that's the innocence of a child. I mean, that's what right. I believe. So right. I wanted them to be saved, uh, to be, you know, delivered too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and plus it was a joy to me. Right. So I felt like everyone should have it. So right, right. it was and like sharing want... candy. <laughs> <laughs> so. And, and so now, as you began to, I'm going to say, develop your gifts, mm -hmm. Um, when, 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 when did you start going about doing different, because I mean, at that time you're de you started DJing, right? Yeah, As I started you got DJing older? at 17, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, okay. And so you would go about, you know, doing music at different activities or yes. different events and stuff like that. Yep. Yeah. How was that for you, knowing that, okay, I gave my life to the Lord, like, were you playing secular music? Was, I mean. How well, it, it was secular music. Mm -hmm. I mean, I played some gospel too because right. that's, you know, you had the clock sisters that was crossing over and different acts that, you know, that's you played true. you played that music in, you know, the places where people went to right, hear right. circular music. Right. So they sing, um, you brought this sunshine yep, in my life. Yep. I remember that. I yes. remember that. You're yes. right about that. Yes, You're and right. it was a lot of songs that were just accepted as regular songs and you know, they played them just like they would play any other, you know, mm -hmm. secular music. So, wow. Yeah. So it was a blend, but it was it was mostly circular, you know, secular music. So right now, um, because there are so many different types, there's, you know, secular DJs. And so you're kind of like set a, apart. Have you ever been tempted to do like an, an event where it's like music that you really don't want to hear? <laughs> I, I've been asked. <laughs> But I've been around for a few decades, so a lot of the people that, you know, they come to me for events, they kind of know mm -hmm. that I'm a Christian and they know my limits, my limitations. I'm not going right. to play certain things. I'm not going to play, you know, bad language or anything, mm -hmm. you know, too sexual, or, you know, and that nature. So, right, right. So they kind of, you know, know what I'm going to play. Or I'll tell them, look, this is what I do. Mm -hmm. You know, everything's clean. Everything's you know, not too yeah. much to the left, you know. And, right, But right. that's why I, I mostly concentrate on the older music because the older mm -hmm. music is 
more pure. That's why they called it soul, classic soul. Right. Because right. it wasn't spiritual, but it was taken from that music. Mm -hmm, you know, soul music mm -hmm. was taken from gospel music. Right. That's right. why, you know, artists like Ray Charles, they had, you know, they got so much flack from making secular music because they came right. from the church. Right. Every right, artist right. you can think of, they had it, some it, kind of church background. Exactly. And exactly, they just yeah. converted it into soul or R and B music. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that's why it wasn't you know, it was kinda easy conversion to do that. Mm -hmm. But now today's music is like way out there. Where right. you know, you know automatically it's about you know, sin and it's for yes. the world. So yes, yes. You, you yes. know that from just listening to it. That's so, true. That's true. So it's a yeah. big difference. And that's why we're saying I, I think really you stand out. That mm -hmm. that's unique, you know, um, because not everybody wants to hear, you know, that type of stuff. No. Um and I know there's times like financially you had to really depend on God because you know, you weren't about to compromise the gift that God has given you. Yes. But when I spoke to you earlier, I was thinking about um, Chief Musician David. Okay. Do you comp do you feel like there's some connection there? I can relate to him definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. Yes. And so, who else is your inspiration? As far as as far as music, um, you know, even DJs. Mm-hmm. Well, as far as artists, I mean, I I grew up to you know listening to Sam Cooke and Jackie right. Wilson. That's that's where you know my music roots are. So mm -hmm. you know all that music about love and you know having yeah. a good time, but right. nothing you know way you know out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. You know they sung about their heart, their life. So right, right. it was a lot more pure than it is now. So right, right. So that's that's where I'm from. That's where I draw from. Right. So and now I I understand that you have your own production company. How did that come about? Well it basically came from me being a DJ and, and doing events where it turned in from, you know, being a street DJ to mm -hmm. actually developing a, a company. Right. So that's how we kind of took it to another level where we, we went and we did, you know, like definitely, you know, big events mm -hmm. and, you know, we spread ourselves out as far as doing studio work and recording wow. and writing and that type of thing. So, right. So, I mean, so you're actually, I mean, you're really behind the scenes, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, was that hard to get started? Did you feel like that was something that God called you to do, or did it just make it just make sense? It just made sense. It just it just flowed with whatever I was doing at the time. Right. You know, I was you know basic definitely called to do music because that's it's engraved in me. So right. You know, that's that's where my you know my focus was as far as business. So that's how mm -hmm. everything developed from the DJ to production to performances and mm -hmm. you know it just elevated over the years. Wow. So. Wow. Now, how many how many years have you been producing? I don't. <laughs> I don't do a I lot. Think of, a long time. Yes, I don't do a lot of production now. Okay. Um, other than like the mix CDs and and different recordings that I do, but uh, back in the '90s, I was actually um, mm -hmm. recording artists, rap artists, and you know, recording music. So. Right. Right. Yeah. Has there ever been a time where you just wanted to just wipe your hands of it? Because it just seemed like all those DJs out there that's doing secular music is making more money than you. Have there ever been a time where you just said, you know what, I'm tired of this. I'm, I'm ready to go over to the other side. I mean, because it happens. It happens. You yes. know, people start out wanting to do good. Good. And, you know, um, we run into certain financial situations where, you know, it's mm -hmm. like that temptation is right there. Yeah. Yeah. Has that ever yeah. happened to you? Well, not really for the money. I never had that push, you know, for the money because I I knew a lot of DJs that I worked with, you know, in my career. Right. That's that's big now, mm -hmm. you know, and they make thousands to my hundreds. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, and and I look at them and I I kind of follow them and see what they're doing now. But mm -hmm. you know, I just feel like they haven't sold their souls, which is good, but oh, they are good. doing, that's important. yeah, but they're yeah. doing a lot of things that maybe they wouldn't do if they had a choice of, of not mm -hmm. wanting the money. Right, you know, right. So. 
what keeps you going? What keeps you going? What, what is your hope? What, like, where do you find that hope? It's, what keeps you going? It's just God and touching others that love music and, mm -hmm. and just spreading, spreading the word through music and, and the love of music to right. people. So that's, that's what pushes me. You know, it's yeah. been times where I, I thought about quitting or, mm -hmm. you know, never not, not going to the other side, but I've thought about quitting and, right. and not doing it anymore. Cause like, you know, back in the day before they stopped the smoking in public places, mm -hmm. it was horrible. You know, yeah. it got to the point where you were DJing in a smoky room and it's like, wow. you yeah. can't even breathe. Right. You know, and, and right. I didn't smoke a drink. So mm -hmm. it's like, I can't take this. It's, it's just yeah. too much. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. easier dealing with the people because in some of those places you are from the actual crowd. So mm -hmm. you're playing out, but you're from the crowd. But still, you you know, you're touched by all of that. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, growing up, you said there were like there were like 10 of you. Right. So when you were younger, did you ever feel like one day you know, I want to be here. Like you, you had set goals for yourself and, you know, depending on God to get you there. Well, when I was young, I wanted to be James Brown. So <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I wanted to do. You know, right. then of course I, I, you know, was, you know, introduced to little Michael Jackson. So that was it for me, you know, wow. so I always wanted to perform and, and do music, you know, mm -hmm. so that was where I thought I would be. Right. You know, I would be a performer. Right. Where, you know, out east I did a lot of talent shows and, mm -hmm. and won competitions and, you know, stuff like that. So right. it just looked like that's where I was headed, but mm -hmm. it, that's not what God wanted for me. So Yeah. I think some people think that, like, when you have this, this gift that everything is just going to fall right into place. Tell us some about some, about it, some of the struggles that you went through. Um, you know, going through and advancing in what you want to do? Well, the music was easy to share. I mean, like when I first started DJing, um, I used to play in a back room that I couldn't come out of because I was too young <laughs> to be in the places I was DJing. But Wait a minute, know, they let you play the music, but not... I couldn't wow. go to the floor because I was the entertainment. So right. I could entertain, uh -huh. but I couldn't go out into the people or uh, be in the actual... Uh, event where the event was right you know, but they did pay you right oh yeah oh okay yeah, they paid me. <laughs> said, not oh, yeah. a lot but they <laughs> but they paid me but i i was too young to be there right so you know you was hearing this music coming out of a back room wow. and you know you could kind of glance and see who was doing it but yeah i right. couldn't like go out and mingle with the crowd so right right you know yeah. so that was a little challenging because i couldn't you know interact with the crowd but mm -hmm. You know, and then getting older, you know, getting into the production side of it, mm -hmm. um, you know, being pulled into that, being pulled into the industry, which kind of pulled me out of church where, you mm -hmm. know, I was like, all right, so I'm not going to church as much as I was. So oh, I seen okay. that, you know, that yeah. was maybe a negative pull for me. So right, right. Uh, eventually I stopped doing that. But mm -hmm. You know, because, you know, the rappers, they think they have to do certain things and be a certain way exactly. to be in the yes. industry. So that yes. was a, a bad mm -hmm. influence for me where it was a pull. Right. You know, and I was right. like, oh, I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, I even did a little rapping myself. and But, <laughs> you know, I kept it clean and, you know, so. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, it was it was fun, but it was it wasn't for me to stay right. in. So. What was now? OK, I'm glad you said that. Because, um, I mean, you were young when you gave your life to the Lord. And sometimes, let's face it, sometimes we, we do backslide. Mm -hmm. You know, we do. Let's face it. Yes. Um, what was that like for you? I mean, because God has been in your life all that time. And all of a sudden, you're in this position where, you know, you left God. Yeah. So how, like, what was that like? Well, it's, it's it wasn't like I left them, but it wasn't my norm. Like my okay. norm was going to church all every week and mm -hmm. and and being there all the time. So mm -hmm. getting older and also you're able to make that decision whether you're going to go or not. Because when you yes. were younger, you was like, you know, told Mama made you go. Yeah, go to church, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. you know, and then it got to be, you know, to a point where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. But 
being caught up in in the world like that it was it was definitely a pull right but you know i didn't you know lose my christianity uh uh turn completely from it but i mm -hmm. knew that it wasn't like it was so right. i knew it was a pull mm -hmm. that you know all right i have to yeah. kind of correct things uh, i'll go back you right, know, right to my first love so. ah, <laughs> see, that's the magic word right there yeah. first love first yes. love and you know the good thing about god is that when we do come back to him with a sincere heart you know he opens up his arms you know so what has life been for you what, what has it been like since you've come back to god like back to your first love oh it's it's been beautiful i mean i i've you know i met my wife mm. um wow i actually started you know playing drums in the church and wow. and doing different things also with the dj and so uh -huh. i became you know more involved in the church and ministries mm -hmm. um you know doing sound and ushering in the church and right you know so i got way more involved than i was wow so and, and you know um you and i we were talking about integrity you know, walking in integrity and stuff. And I think that when you have such a gift like that, I mean, you're doing drums, you, you know, you're DJing um, and not compromising, that's integrity. Would you say so? Yes, I would. And it's God, because, <laughs> you know, being God, around, definitely. you know, everyone that's drinking and, and experimenting yes. with drugs, you know, back in the 80s, you mm -hmm. know, and, you know, women all around you, it's, it's tough. Yeah. It's, it's tough. And, right. I don't, you know, the only way I could do that was with God, because, right. you know, I I talk to people and it's like, it's no way you didn't drink or smoke. It's no <laughs> way. It was like it, it was too much partying. You know, it's like it's no way. And yeah. And he kept me. He kept wow. me. So wow. um, has there ever been anyone that um, when you would do these events, they would come to you and say, wow, I, I really need it. I really needed uh, that, you know, that song you played, it, it really spoke to me, it really ministered to me. Yes, I, I've had that. I've Tell had me that about it, I wanna hear. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I don't play the norm always. So mm -hmm. of course, you you know, when you have an event, people expect to hear, you know, what they know and, and what's popular. So, right. you know, with me, I always been like a record breaker where I would play things that was maybe not as familiar as others oh, and okay. also with the the gospel also like right. you know sometime i would you know end the event with marvin Sapp, never would have made it wow and it's like wow i don't know why you played that but wow That's that did right. it for me yeah. you know and and yeah. you touch people by that yeah you know yeah. so it's it's very special when you know you get that feedback and people say that wow you mm -hmm. know you you did a, a great job for our event so yeah because you never know what they were going to go home to or how they were feeling at the time and here you come you know putting on something like that yeah you know um now i know you had a lot of positive people around you you know supporting you has there ever been anyone who has hated on you <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure but <laughs> trying to say it right <laughs> yeah I'm sure, but you know, they basically kept it to my, to themselves, I guess, because mm -hmm. I I always had you know a surrounding, you know, of good people around me. Because right. even being in those places that mm -hmm. you know maybe I shouldn't have been, you mm -hmm. know, I felt God had people watch over me. Right. You know, because right. from being a child to you know growing up mm -hmm. where you you're in spots where people are shooting inside the the. Yeah, the, the club, and it's like okay. <laughs> Has that ever happened though? Have you ever like played somewhere and then there just a riot starts? Yes, I've had. I want to hear. Oh, oh god! <laughs> I want to hear real quick. I just want right. to hear. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had one uh, place that I was playing. We were trying to do something weekly there, mm -hmm. um, and I was DJing there and trying to build a, a following for that place right. that I was playing mm -hmm. and I built a following you know people right. started coming in they were loving the music and mm -hmm. you know of course you know when I DJ any event this is basically what you're gonna see you're gonna see a little less than this but right. you won't see me coming in you know in a t-shirt and I'm right. DJing you know and, and no disrespect to people that do that but mm -hmm. you know that's how I was I, right. I always dressed and and I lifted you know, the 
the criteria is a little bit. So mm -hmm. people would start dressing more. Right. Um, people would come in that were, you know, trying to be a little more sophisticated. You right, know? right. And this one place I was playing, they started changing the dress code, you know, mm -hmm. changing what they were charging for people to come in. And this was in your regular neighborhood, and you had right. people that was like, look, we made this club. We built it up to what it was. We right. were here supporting you, mm -hmm. and now you're trying to tell us how to dress uh, uh, who you want in, the, in this spot in the that spot, I was right. playing. So right. they kind of resented that, and oh. they had retaliation from that, where right. someone right. you know shot in inside, mm -hmm. and you know just to disturb things and and you know maybe cause the place to close. Now so, you do you you pray because I know like before I do something I try to remember to pray. You do you pray yes. before you get started? Yes. Yeah, cause that that's very important. That's yes. very important. Now I I you know I really want you to um, give our viewers the information on how they can contact you um, okay. because you know you do events and I think that's great. You know do you do church events? Yes, definitely. Okay, why did I ask that? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know why For I asked sure. that, right? <laughs> okay, so just you know give them your contact information how they can get in touch with All you. All right. Well, um, you can email me at jazza25 at yahoo.com. Uh, that's J A Z S A. 25 um facebook uh jesse with no i no y uh, jesse dot smith dot 9803 on facebook um you can call of course uh 631-413-5521 and you can get quotes and information on events that way so wow. do you have a website no not an actual not website, a website. Okay. just using facebook for um, promotion and stuff at this time so so you're building you're just like building up yes. right? okay that's beautiful that's cool. beautiful I'm really so happy that you know you came on the show today I just want to say a quick prayer to close us out if that is okay yes okay yes. father in the name of Jesus we thank you for this time, Lord God. We ask that you would bless our viewers and bless the guests that came on today to share uh, his ministry, Lord God. Lord, Lord, touch the hands of those, Lord God, who would love to do music and to glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that is our show for today. This is what I want you to do. I want you to tune in next week for Repairer of the Breach. God bless you.